Recently, Amazon released its code auto-completion tool, Code Whisperer, for the public. And unlike its competitor, GitHub Copilot, it offers a generous free plan for individual users. So if you wanted to try a new code auto-completion tool while working on your private projects, but you didn't want to pay a subscription for it, it is worth checking out Code Whisperer. As I mentioned, Code Whisperer comes with a free plan for individual users and it has a very few limitations compared to the paid plan. As you can see here, with the free version, we are getting code generation for all the supported languages and they are listed in this section. We are also getting reference tracking and this is a very cool feature that I will talk about just in a moment. And on top of that, in a free version, we are getting up to 50 code security scans per user per month in contrast to the 500 that you will get in paid version. But besides that, I think that, that, that there are really no limitations that will affect individual users because all the differences, uh, they are mostly focused around the organization level management. So let's take a step back into the overview and see how it works in practice. So as you can see in this section, it is very similar to the GitHub Copilot in a way that you can write some comments and it will try to generate code based on them. Uh, or you can write some, start writing your own code and it will try to autocomplete after that. But what is really cool those code suggestions are also, they are also providing a reference to the source code that this tool was trained on. So we can make sure that when you incorporate them in your own code base, that the source code is uh, provided under the license that allows you to do this without getting into some legal issues. And moving on to the next section, as you can see here, the Code Whisperer is supported in most popular IDEs like Visual Studio Code, IDEs from JetBrains, and of course, it is incorporated into AWS solutions like Cloud9 and Lambda Console. And I think that is enough of a theoretical introduction and I would like to invite you to the next parts where I will show you how it works in Visual Studio Code with TypeScript project and later I will move on to IntelliJ IDEA and show you how it handles a Kotlin project. Okay, so as you can see right now I'm in Visual Studio Code within my TypeScript project, but I still haven't installed Code Whisperer yet. So in order to do that, I will navigate to the extensions tab and I will search for AWS Toolkit and then I will proceed to install this extension. After installation, you will see that in the bottom bar, two buttons will appear, first AWS and second Code Whisperer. Code Whisperer is now highlighted in yellow, which means that it doesn't work properly. And in order to fix that, I will have to click on the first button in and connect to AWS. So for me, there are two options. Uh, first option is to select AWS Builder ID that I have already linked with my Visual Studio Code instance and another is to add new connection. So if you haven't already connected your AWS profile with Visual Studio Code, then you would have to choose the second option and then use the first option to either create new AWS profile or link it with existing one. And after that, you'll be able to select this profile and activate Code Whisperer with it. So as you can see right now, I have already connected to my AWS Builder ID and now Code Whisperer is fully functional. Okay, so now let's see how this tool works with TypeScript code completion. So to start with, I will generate union type for Pokemon type and we'll see the suggestion so it doesn't trigger by itself so i'll hit alt c 
and yeah it generated some pokemon types it is okay it also generated some code snippets for pokemon ability i don't want them so i'll just delete it and i will delete the export but other than that it looks great so with this i would like to create a type for pokemon and i'll see how it goes so it is suggesting a name that's cool type and level and i will just stop it here so from now i would like to create a list of pokemon so i will go with const pokemons and i will trigger called completion yeah and it is uh giving those two s's i think pokemons better and yeah it is suggesting to add a bulbazar that is grass type it's correct oh and it is also suggesting charmander that's fire but maybe let's go with ivizar next so yeah it is also grass and then it will go with venusaur so okay it is going with the bulbazar evolutions and now we'll get charmander and Charmeleon and Charizard so cool it is definitely following the pattern and the Pokemons are uh, with like appropriate levels for the evolution so it is cool so yeah maybe now let's stop and let's try to find fire Pokemons and yeah it is uh, trying to find the Pokemons with type fire but it is using this P alias for the Pokemon and I would like to use it the full name so maybe yeah I can roll the code suggestions with left and right arrow keys and it looks much better so now I've got fire Pokemon so maybe uh, I would like to find fire Pokemons with level above 20 so const fire above 20 and yes it is filtering filtering fire pokemons with level above 20 so maybe now let's go with Uh, water Pokemons above 20 and yes it is also working correctly so it is filtering Pokemons by level and by type so right now I can also console lock firstly the pokemons not this but pokemons then fire pokemons fire pokemons above 20 and water pokemons above 20 and it is looking kind of great so i'll go to the terminal and compile this TypeScript project and I will run it with node yeah so as you can see <clears throat> what we've got here is a list of our Pokemons then we've got the list of only fire Pokemons later we get the list of <clears throat> fire Pokemons above level 20 and uh, at the end we got the list of water pokemons about level 20. so i think that sums up the quick introduction to the code whisperer with typescript and now i would like to move on to the intellij and see how it works with kotlin 
Okay, so as you can see right now, I'm inside IntelliJ IDEA and in order to add Code Whisper to this IDE, all you have to do is go to the plugins. So I will press double shift, navigate to the plugins and in marketplace section, you should be able to install AWS toolkit. I have already installed it, so I will skip that step. And after the installation, you will see an AWS tab and from here you could proceed to developer tools and you'll see a code whisperer tool uh, if you install it for the first time you would have to add a new connection and it will be the similar process to the one from visual studio code after the installation and uh, connecting to your aws builder id you should see that code whisperer is uh, fully functional Okay, so now let's see how Code Whisperer handles Kotlin auto suggestion. So I have a new Kotlin project and I will create a new Kotlin enum class named Pokemon type. It is an empty enum and Code Whisperer is already suggesting some Pokemon types. Okay, so from here I will move to the, I'll add a new Kotlin class in this time data class named Pokemon. And I would have it with a name, it is correct, with a type, but I don't like this type because it is a string. I would prefer it to use a Pokemon type, so use Pokemon type instead and I'll get it with level, it is okay. So from here I'll go back to the main class and I'll try to create a list of Pokemon. So create of Pokemons. val pokemon list list of and from here it is suggesting to add balbazar with type grass and level poison so as you can see it doesn't work that great because pokemon require a type pokemon type and level as an int, so let me help here by importing this and also I'll change the level to the level 5 and we'll see how it goes from here and yeah it is working better right now it is creating Charmander with level 3 and type fire and it is creating Squirtle with level 2 so let's go with the Pikachu and again the Pokemon type has only three values and it is trying to create a electric type. So it isn't that great but maybe let's go with Ivysaur. I'm not Eevee but Ivysaur. Yeah and it can create Ivysaur, let's make it level 10. And from here, it's creating a Venusaur level 15, and a Charizard level 6, and Blastoise level 8. And it is again trying to create a Pikachu. So, as you can see, the context of this auto completion isn't that great, but still, it can be very useful. And from here, we can try to create a list of only water Pokemon. So uh, water Pokemon equals Pokemon list and it is suggesting to add a filter. Um, but still 
it doesn't suggest the closing of the lambda brackets that's kind of disappointing but after it it works kind of good and it is suggests to print this value so maybe let's try to find a val fire fire pokemons above level uh, 4 and it is filtering this list but still it doesn't suggest closing the lambda function so again kind of disappointing but after that it is also suggesting the print function so it is looking kind of cool in that terms so let's try to run this code and we'll see how it goes but as you can see this tool can be useful but it has kind of limited knowledge about your code base so it can suggest uh, some enum types that aren't even declared in your code Okay, so here we've got some prints from the uh, project in its realization and we've got water pokemons and it is correct and we have fire pokemons above level 4 and it is also correct. So I think this sums up this quick introduction to Code Whisperer with Kotlin. Okay, so to sum things up We've seen how to integrate uh, Code Whisperer into Visual Studio Code and IntelliJ IDEA. In both cases, the process was uh, really simple and intuitive. And when it comes to working with code, with TypeScript and Kotlin, it is really capable tool, but sometimes it lacks the context of your project. So for example, when I've got the Kotlin enum and I was trying to instantiate the data class that has a uh, one field with this enum and the code, the code whisperer was trying to uh, put some string values into there not using the enum so that was kind of disappointing but still when I corrected it uh, it followed up with the uh, correct pattern so I think that overall this tool is kind of impressive especially if we take into account the fact that it is free tool for individual users so uh, personally I will really recommend trying it out